Today I'm going to show you how to use this radio, the TYT9000, to build a high-powered all-star link node or an APRS digipeter or iGate. Now this radio will be interfacing to these little boards here. This is on the bottom the Toads DI or digital interface, that little purple board there on the bottom. And it is connected here to the Toad DI6 daughter board. And what this does is it breaks it out to a six pin DIN connector here that you see standard on the back of most radios like ICOM, Yaesu, Kenwood radios. The good thing about this radio, and I got this from Radio Oddity. This is, uh, again, this is the, the model, TH9000D plus slash pro. If you're interested in this, then there is a link in the description to purchase this from Radio Oddity at the time of recording. It's around about $140. And this radio will do 65 watts on high power. It's got some other functions. You could use it as a normal mobile radio as well. But the thing that interests me about it is here on the back, you could see that there is a little sticker that says DSL. Now, if I actually peel this little sticker away, then it reveals a slot for a DB9 connector for a uh, serial type port type connector. Now, this is very similar to what is on the back of some of the Alinkos. I think that they've taken this design from this and you can actually put in a DB9 or we're gonna put something else in here so that we can interface it to something external like this board and we can then use this radio for All Star Link or uh, Die Wolf or whatever we wanna use it for. So we're gonna need a couple of things today. We've got the radio, we've got the boards and we're also gonna need a special cable here. Now again, all of the links are in the description below for everything that you need. Uh, let's open this up so that we can get started. So these screws here on the bottom of the radio are the special Torx bits. I've got a Torx bit here that fits it. So just undo these screws from the bottom cover and we'll just put those there to one side. Now, sometimes the cover can be a little bit sticky and a little bit harder to get up. So just maybe just pry some of the corners up with a screwdriver and once we remove the bottom cover, you'll notice here that we've got a little connector here. This is our interface in and out of the board. This is what uh, we're going to connect one of these cables. This is a little uh, JST connector, six pin cable connector. This I got off of AliExpress. I've um, got a pack of like 10 of them here. You don't need a pack of 10, but they're pretty cheap. They've got a wire, various different wire lengths. I think this one's the 15 centimeter wire length here. What we can do is we can plug in this connector into the board and just make sure that it goes in all the way. And there we go. Now what we need to do is we just need to wire this up through the back and into our connector that we're going to use. Now, the wiring for this is listed here on the screen, I'll show you. So it begins with pin one towards the front of the radio. So pin one is this white one here on my particular connector and pin six is the red one here. So pin one we've got is our ground, uh, pin two is our transmit audio, pin three is our COS or our squelch um, output, We've got receive audio, we've got PTT, and we've also got plus five volts. Now, a friend and channel member, Darren, VK4GEO, he's made these little TYT TH9000 uh, mini DIN adapters, and we just need to basically solder our wires in. And then what I can do is I can just use a simple straight through cable from this to this, and we're done. It's a really, really simple um, process. Again, you could use a DB9 connector that I like I've got here, so we could just place that in the back and you see that it actually fits quite nicely. So we could use that, but I'm gonna use Darren's board. Now, if you wanna get some of these, he does have these available um, for VK viewers only. So um, just have a look on qrz.com, uh, uh, VK4GEO and he should be able to uh, help you out with uh, getting some of these. But in any case, you can also just use um, one of the DB9s. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna install um, this in the back like so and solder our wires through. So first of all, our white uh, lead is our ground. So what we're going to do is solder that into the ground pin 
you might want to use a, uh, a vise or something like that to do this. I'm used to having not enough hands to be able to do the job, but we've got that in now. So our next one is TX Audio. So we've got uh, that being our blue. Our squelch line is green. Now the squelch line is um, active low. It's not active high. Um, like the, some of the other radios that you'll see, um, like some of the Yasus are mostly active high. So this one inverts it. The good thing about the Toad's DI daughter board is that you have a switch here for mute so you can select between high and low. Now the next line is receive audio and that is this yellow one here. Now receive audio, there are uh, spots here on the board for RX12 and RX96. So that's 1200 or 9600 because it's on these six pin mini dins um, and also on the Toad's DI you get the option of selecting 9600 or 1200. Um, in the radios such as the Yasus and stuff. But the problem with these is, uh, well, this TYT is you only get the 1200 um, audio, which is filtered. There is no processing, uh, sorry, there is processing done on it. It's not um, raw audio. So uh, I've got some more information on this on my website. I'll put a link below to information on what these actually all mean. It might just um, clear up some, some things that um, are not quite understood. So when I was doing research into the Toad's DI board, I discovered all of this stuff. So I've shared it on my um, website. PTT, so we will put that one in. And then lastly, we will have five volts, which we don't have a pin out for and we don't require. So what we'll do is we'll end up just uh, covering that. Okay, so what we can do is we can snip the five volt line, which we don't need. Um, I'll put a little bit of heat shrink on the end of that. Okay, so we can push this back now. For mounting these screws, they or mounting screws in here, they are tapped. So let's just see if we can put some M3 screws in. Now it looks like these screws are tapped with uh, M2.5 millimeter screws. So I've got a couple here in my spare parts drawer. So you might need to find some. I have read uh, that a few people have used the screws, the top cover screws and just borrowed those um, to put in there. And I probably would put a little cable tie in there just to hold it down, but I think for the moment it will be fine. And there we go. We've got a interface on the back of our radio. So now all I need to do is just plug in our six pin mini din connector into the back. And then what we can do is we can then come out and plug directly into our Toad's DI digital interface board and connect this up to our Pi and we'll see if it works. Now, there is one thing also to keep in mind with this radio, which I should point out, is that if you start to press the buttons to program and do things here on the front panel, while it's connected to the Toad's DI board, it does do some funny things. For some reason, it's sending some sort of signaling back and causing it to transmit. If I actually press the function button, it seems like it wants to, there we go, transmit or receive a signal or something. It's like it's, it's, like it's hearing something. So I recommend not pressing any of these buttons or, re or programming anything in the radio while you've got this plugged in. Just unplug it do your changes, change your power levels, change your tones, frequency, whatever, and then plug it back in. Otherwise you might find some erratic operation. Okay, I've set my levels. Everything is all plugged in. I've got my radio here on 145, 350, just plugged into a dummy load. If we key it up, we'll see there that it's transmitting VK7HH testing. And you can see there, and it's transmitting. Now let's do an audio test and see what it sounds like. I'm just using my Kenwood handheld here at VK7HH, VK7 Hotel Hotel. Testing one, two, three, four, five, all Starlink node. Audio level is just about right. VK7HH, VK7 Hotel Hotel. Testing one, two, three, four, five, all Starlink node. If you want to also do it for APRS, which is what I'm probably going to do using Direwolf, then you can do that too, um, just by imaging up a Raspberry Pi and using the Toad's DI boards here. Now, for these boards to interface to this radio, if you want to get hold of these, then they are available here in Australia on my shop, hamradiodx.net forward slash shop for VK and ZL. 
If you're in the US, then it is temporarilyoffline.com. And if you're in the UK, then it is shop.m0jsx.radio. And all the links are below in the description uh, for that board. Now, the thing that also you need to keep in mind with this radio, though, is that it does get quite warm. If you're listening to an all star link signal that's coming back and this radio is transmitting, it's going to get pretty warm, even on low power. So that's where uh, my mate Darren, VK4GEO, he also sent me this timer with uh, a fan, so you can mount the fan here on top. So that's also a very good idea to, to do that to keep this radio cool. Now, if I'm gonna use this for APRS, it's probably highly unlikely that I would need that fan because the radio won't be transmitting long enough to get hot. But if you are using it for All Star Link, then that is a very um, good thing to do. I'm also around about 12,000 subscribers away from 100,000. I would really appreciate it if you found this video helpful to please subscribe to my channel. I do lots of videos like this to help you out, uh, build, experiment, inspire you to do things. The other thing too is that I didn't show in this video how to set up the audio levels using the Toad's DI board in the menus in All Star Link and also I haven't also gone into very much detail about what this board can really do. It's quite versatile, but I did in other videos. If you wanna see those and learn a little bit more about this entire setup, then there are a couple of those videos over here that you can watch right now.